And welcome back to Devlog. Oh no, the monster's coming. I've got to hide. Okay, I think we're safe. In the last part I worked on, and in this part I'll be working on the portal mechanic for Pet Pal's new space-themed level. The portal mechanic is the main mechanic for Pet Pal's space level, along with two other mechanics because I like mechanics. But the portal mechanic is very, very simple. Essentially, you will have a blue portal and a pink portal at its most basic version. When going into one portal, your velocity will be flipped and your gravitational amount will be flipped. So if you fell into a portal and you landed into it, your amount would be reversed at your falling and you would boost upwards out of the other portal. Same for the opposite, if you jump into a portal from the ground upwards, you're going to fall out of the portal you go into. So there is a physics situation to do with the portal mechanics, and this adds a nice little puzzle sort of mechanic to the levels, as well as playing with the momentum and physics of the portals themselves. So, how does the logic for the portals actually work? It is very simple, when the player enters through the portal's collider, they will be teleported to the alternate portal. This is just the object in the scripting, which is corresponding to another portal mechanic. So the blue portal will correspond to the pink portal, the pink portal will correspond to the blue portal. And all this does is when the player enters one portal, they will be set to the positioning of the other portal, so they'll move from one portal to another. I'll then get the player's momentum, and it will flip this completely, so if the player was moving left, they will now move right. I'll then also flip the direction of the player, so the player moving left will then be set to be moving right, and their momentum will also be set to moving right, so if you run in a portal to the right of you, you're going to have your momentum flipped, and you're going to run out of the left of the other portal. I'll then check if the player is in the air, and if they are, I'll flip the gravity amount. The reason this is checked only if the player is in the air is because gravity isn't really used in any other mechanic aside from wall climbing, but I don't plan on putting any portals on walls, so this will never occur. And even if it does, wall climbing has so much control over it that actually setting the gravity when on the wall is completely pointless because it will just be set to zero because the player isn't moving once they have exited the wall, or will be set to whatever direction they are pressing, regardless of what the portal has actually done to the player when on the wall. If entering the portal from midair, I will just flip the gravity amount to be the negative amount or the positive amount, so multiplied by minus one, and then this just changes whatever the gravity amount is. This is all incredibly simple. I'll then change the position to the other portal, and I'll assign a bool to the other portal that says the player has just teleported to this portal. This means that the player isn't going to instantly be teleported out of the secondary portal that they've just teleported into. They must then leave this portal, and once the player has left this portal's area, the portal will be able to tell the player has left. We can set this bool to false, and then the player can actually use this portal once again. So teleport to another portal, the portal is told that it can't teleport the player again because the player is currently inside this portal, the player exits the other portal, they can now teleport again because they have exited the portal they have been sent into. And that's all very easy and simple, but you may have noticed some minor discrepancies in the way the portal mechanics work. For example, going in a portal doesn't always flip your x and y direction. For example, if there are two portals above each other, going into one may not actually flip your x momentum. Or if there's a portal on the other side of a hazardous wall, going through one portal is not going to flip the direction you're moving in, you'll just come out of the other portal like normal. Essentially, I wanted the portals to logically carry momentum as however they would actually look in the scene. So if a portal looks like it's going to flip your direction, it's going to flip your direction. If a portal doesn't look like it's going to flip your direction, it's not going to. And this is just sort of a thing that I designed in the levels and just is whatever makes sense for the current situation. Realistically, most portals are going to flip your directions, but in some instances, I need them not to be able to do this. 
And here is a section of the devlog where I explain that I cheat a lot with the portal mechanics. The first cheat is that momentum is not actually carried through from the player's momentum. It is, but a modifier is applied to this to make it more satisfying. Whenever going through a portal, 20% of your momentum is increased from your base momentum. So we're always going to be leaving the portal faster than we enter the portal. This means if we were to maybe go into two portals next to each other and continuously go back and forth between those two portals, we would gain infinite amounts of speed and be able to click through the geometry of the level. But that's not going to happen so don't worry about it. Another thing I have is if the portal should flip the X momentum or not. This is just the ball, if the ball is true we will flip the direction, if the ball is false we will not flip the direction. This is just for some instances of level designs where I want portals to not flip the direction a player is moving in. And finally I will have it so that the Y velocity when exiting a portal is always positive. There is a few instances where I want this to happen. For example, going through some sections of portals, it has very small, minute differences where if the player was to be falling when going into the portal or be slightly not falling or going upwards, for example if they have just dashed, it will make it so the trajectory when leaving the portal will be too low and then they will undershoot whatever they had to platform onto when exiting the portal. In these situations, I will have it so when exiting the portal, you always have a positive Y amount because these portals are placed in situations where your Y velocity does not matter as much and therefore I will just make it easier for the player to make certain platforming situations when they have a level of dependency on your Y velocity but not a focus on it. Now let's talk about making this mechanic weirder. Halfway through the portal level, which is the space level, which is the meteor level, I introduced triple portals. The base portal would be the blue and pink portal, you go into the blue portal, you come out of the pink portal, you go into the pink portal, you come out of the blue portal. Halfway through the level I introduce yellow portals. In these situations, you go into the blue portal, you come out of the pink portal, you go into the pink portal, you come out of the yellow portal, you go into the yellow portal, you come out of the blue portal. Why did I add these? Hmm. Would it be funny? I wanted to add some level of complexity to the portal mechanic and also a level of uniqueness to the portal mechanic for I feel a lot of video games that have portal mechanics, they have the two portals and having the actual mechanic evolve and get more complex as the level completes or progresses is a lot more interesting for the player. It is a little bit confusing going from just having two portals to three portals but essentially since all portals are fixed I will just design levels around making it very obvious when a third portal is being used and pretty much not using a section of two portals once that aspect of the game is introduced as having three portals. So the first half of the level will have two portals, the second half of the level will have three portals. So hopefully this won't be super confusing for the player. Luckily, the portal mechanic is not the main actual mechanic of the space level, despite it being the main mechanic of the space level. So, realistically, it's not a actual thing I need to have a huge amount of focus on in level designs. There will just be portals in the level, and the player will organically, at a glance, hopefully, maybe, be able to tell where the portals are going to end up. One method I have for this is just by having all portals in visual sightline when first entering a level or having all portals teleport the player in an organic way so you can logically tell which portal is going to lead you to one position or at the very least the player will die very quickly and then learn where portals exit. Let's talk about the most complicated aspect of the portals nothing to do with the portals. One mechanic of the space level is the shadow pep pals that will follow the main character. Another aspect of pep pal is that she has a trail that will follow her based on her speed and how fast she is moving. The shadow pep pals also have a trail that follows them based on their speed and how far they are moving. So when going through a portal, the trail will draw from one portal to another when going through it. This is a problem. Obviously, if a portal is supposed to look organic and like the player is actually teleporting, having their visual trails follow them is a pretty big issue. 
because I'm completely removing this actual visual detail of the player seamlessly teleporting by having an object follow from one portal to another, it very obviously shows that the portals are just moving the player from one point to another and ruins the magic of the actual portals. So I had to find a way to fix this. The solution for the player was pretty simple when I have the visual for dashing, this is a certain section of trails for the player, I will simply check if this is a game object and if it is, as in it hasn't deleted itself from decaying, if it is still a game object, it still exists when dashing into a portal, I'm going to instantly remove this game object and just delete it from the scene because this object would interfere with the portal mechanic and therefore is not used. The second thing is the line renderer that is used for the pet pal trails. What I do for these is I will shorten the distance of them to pet pal so they are incredibly close to her and then I will have these adjust over time so her trail will naturally grow to its normal size when exiting a portal but when immediately going into a portal they are removed completely so they don't snap from one portal to another. And that's all very easy, Pat Pal is a logical little girl and she is having her logic changed when entering a portal anyway. However, the Shadow Pet Pals don't enter portals, they don't have any physics along with them, all they do is copy the player's positioning, which is kind of difficult to test when they have gone into a portal or not, because they technically haven't. They never go into portals, they just know that the player was at one point at point A, portal A, and at another point point B, portal B, but they have no logic to tell that they have gone through a portal and should disable their trail renderers. And the solution I found for this was pretty simple, all I do is check the distance from one point to another, usually this is very slight because this is being added every single frame, so logically the player isn't going to be moving a huge amount in one frame. If they have moved a huge amount in one plane, in one frame, we can reasonably deduce that they have gone through a portal and therefore should have their trail renderers disabled until they can naturally exit the portal. So if the distance gone in one frame to another frame with the shadow pet pals is too large, I will disable their trail renderers and then I will have these grow over time as they start moving through normal actual movements. So distance too large, turn off trail renderers, and then as distances go back to normal, the trail renderers will reach back to their normal distance. Finally, we have the actual visual and audio design of the portal. For those of you who have maybe forgotten, the way you enter levels in Pet Pal is by going through a portal. I copied the portal visual from the hub world, changed its colours, added a couple particles and a swirling effect, and now I have a level portal. Obviously, if I'm already using a portal visual design in one aspect of Papel, I should just copy that and use it for another aspect of Papel because it makes them have visual similarity, it makes there be visual cohesion, it makes there be some other word at the end of visual. It makes everything logically make sense. The player has gone through portals to get to levels, they will be able to see a similar looking visual in a level and probably assume that that's a portal, or they'll just run into it and see the player teleport and then figure it out themselves. But realistically, just keeping them similar looking is the most logical solution. I had a couple more particles to make them a bit more visually interesting, which I may add to the level hub portals to make them also look visually similar and also because I think it looks cool. But overall, I just copied the same visual design and changed the colors around to go with the actual level portals so they look different than the actual teleportation into level portals that exist in the hub. I did have to change a few things about these. For example, the sound effect is still the same as the level hub sound effect, except the level hub sound effect will have a 1 in 30 chance of playing a toilet flushing sound effect when going into a portal. This is funny but shouldn't happen in the levels, so I removed it for the level portals. Then I also have a visual to have feedback of which portal you have entered and which portal you have exited. This is pretty much just a circle that is white and a little star effect coming out of the portal to visually show that the player has gone in one portal and come out of another portal. It's the part of the devil where Slick Love talks about why she enjoyed making this mechanic. Overall, the portal mechanic is runny, dummy, full of honey. I really like the portal mechanic. It was very, very simple to make, but also pretty satisfying to make and 
I like how it works in the levels a whole lot. I think the visual style of the portal is very interesting, I like that it's very colourful and eye-catching, but I also really like colourful things. I really like colourful things. Can you tell by this level that I really like colourful things? I like the colourful design of the portals. I, A lot of the visual designs I were going to use were going to be black with a colour ring around them, but I felt like a completely black portal didn't stand out well enough, and also, also, I like bright colours, so making them a bright, really saturated colour really appeals to me. Additionally, the mechanic of the portal I find to be very interesting because it is another mechanic for Pet Pal, because it is another mechanic that is added to Pet Pal that I feel is significantly more simple than the earlier game's mechanics, comparing the ropes and the acrobatic objects and a third example to the current later mechanics in Pet Pal of the black holes and the portals, they're a whole lot more simple in coding than the earlier mechanics used to be, and I'm not sure specifically why this is, it could be that I better understand what is and is not fun for Pet Pal, or the mechanics that are and are not engaging, and therefore I can very quickly plan out fun mechanics for Pet Pal, or maybe I'm just getting better at coding for this little rascally girl's movement setup. But either way, I really like the progression of game mechanics in Pet Pal. I feel like they are all very, very interesting. And from a standpoint where I have made every single game mechanic now, it's going to be interesting to see how the remix level works when I have every mechanic in one level. That may be a bad idea now that I think... Oh well. That level's going to be agony. Can you avoid the lasers, the beasts, and Shadow Pet Pal? All while playing on a rope? Anyway, pull the mechanic funny. I like it. Dev look over. Bye bye. I love you. Bye bye.